The Democratic National Convention kicks off today in Chicago, and while Democrats may have been renewed uh, in terms of their optimism since they booted President Biden from the race, DNC organizers face well-founded fears that the convention may be upstaged by some pro-Hamas demonstrators in the streets of Chicago. So what can we really expect this week at that uh, DNC convention? Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Greg Murphy. He represents uh, uh, his, his district, serves on three different committees. He's from the, uh, the great state of North Carolina. Dr. Murphy, always great to see you, my friend. Welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks, Jody. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, likewise to you. All right, let's uh, let's hit this Democratic National Convention. A lot going on. What do you expect to uh, uh, take place <clears throat> this week? Jody, I expect a full circus, um, a full circus. They're going to nominate somebody who was not nominated by the electoral process, did not go through a primary. In fact, the last primary she went through as a presidential candidate, she did not even make it to Iowa. And so through coronation and through essentially, as you've pointed out, kicking uh, Joe Biden out of the way, and I think Pelosi most likely is thought to have organized, orchestrated that, they're going to coronate a woman who didn't ever have to debate on the primary stage um, to get her nomination. And, you know, as we're going to maybe talk about, some of the things she's going to say are so outlandish, especially economically that I think America will realize she's really a too far radical left candidate uh, for us all. Yeah, and that that would apply whether we're talking economics or abortion or a, a host of other issues, and I'm sure all of it will come up. You know, one of the things, and I really w wanted to get your reaction on this, one of the things that's happening in Chicago this week, Planned Parenthood, uh, they have set up a mobile center uh, offering free abortions and vasectomies to DNC attendees. I, I, I just, I saw that. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, I had, hoped that, I, I had hoped that was just a joke or something on, you know, the onion or something. But if that's true, how depraved is that? They are praising, they are praising murdering a child. You know, that even takes it to an extreme that I, 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 you couldn't even think about such nonsense. Praising getting abortions. Um, you know, it is a sad event for a woman. It's obviously sad for the child, but here they're celebrating it. What type of denom denom uh, excuse me, demonic presence is there um, with Planned Parenthood celebrating this at the DNC? It's unbelievable. Yeah, it, it, it is unbelievable. It's unthinkable. And there they are set up right. And by the way, uh, the federal government uh, gives over $600 million a year to Planned Parenthood. And here they are, offering free yeah. abortions right there at the DNC convention. It is, you know, I'm it fine is with the vasectomies. If, if they want to do those, that's fine. It'll you know, take fewer Democrats <laughs> in the future. But uh, the <laughs> fact that they're praising murdering children and babies, um, and that's, uh, that's ghoulish. It's demonic. It really is. All right. Well, also taking place that we know of is some pro-Hamas protesters. They're going to be attempting, quite frankly, to disrupt a lot of the proceedings. Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, you, you diversity, diversity, careful what you ask for. And this is what's happened, is that you've invited militant, uh, Islamic militants into the country who are praising another demonic, another ghoulish group that on October the 7th invaded and um, murdered, butchered, uh, the citizens of Israel who were at a concert or pulled out of their homes. And you know, again, you, you get what you ask for. Karma is real. And so they're going to have to have identification of, of what's going to happen. You know, it's still to this day, I still don't know how any understand um, how any Jewish person would identify with the Democratic Party, maybe if abortion, maybe if some of the other social issues. But fact that the party and its leadership hate Israel so much the fatherland of Jews, how can you ever, ever support um, a party that does that? It is beyond me. I, I just don't understand it. Really good question. A good question. And hopefully as this uh, election cycle unfolds, that question will be faced by many yeah. uh, and yeah. have to be answered. You know, speaking of all the pro-Hamas stuff, I'm sure you saw Columbia University's president yep. resigned last week. 
uh, right. uh, over this whole anti-Semitism stuff, that, how it was horribly handled. Uh, what, what do you expect across the country as uh, students are going back? You know, I think, uh, you know, I experienced this with um, my alma mater and a previous president that she thought her role was to be a political leader rather than president of a college. Fortunately, the new fellow who's in place doesn't see it that way. But no college leadership, no university leadership should use that as a standing stool for their own political views. It's fine to foster uh, political discussions, but it should never, ever be about pushing an agenda. And it crept, crept up with her. She could, it's a hard line to toe at some of those um, Ivy League schools, but she could have delineated this and found a pathway um, where it's fine to speak, but you've got to speak on both sides. No belligerence. You know, UCLA, the law school, finally got overturned that they were obviously um, segregating and pushing, uh, discriminating against Jewish people. You know, it's taken way too long for her to turn to uh, resign. And, you know, I'm fine if it sends a message to all our leadership at colleges and universities. Stay out of politics. I'll say yeah, the same I, for I hope it does. And protect the students who are there. Yes. All right. Turn, yeah. Turning back to the DNC here real quickly, and we've only got a couple of minutes. Um, uh, President Biden is going to be passing the baton to Kamala Harris tonight. Uh, but do you expect a lot of carryover from the Biden administration to a Harris administration? You know, Jody, I think what we're going to see is, an, is the a Biden administration on nuclear power, because she's already come out with this, this nonsense about um, telling businesses you can only charge so much or that now she wants to raise the capital gain tax from 21 percent uh, up into 39 or 41 percent, second highest in the OECD, um, where she will kill American business. It's a great book um, if you take the the religious uh, overtones out of it called Atlas Shrugged that talked about how you lower the entire society. And that's what she's going to do. I hope America soundingly, soundingly rejects these nonsensical and, in fact, communistic Marxist, Marxist uh, policies that she is espousing. It's unbelievable. If we thought it was bad during the Biden administration, lo and behold, we are in for terror uh, if she gets elected. Yeah, we saw some of that as you referenced her, their, her speech Friday on the on the economy. It, yeah. it it's just it's shocking, it's stunning, it's frightening to to think about where if she had the administration where she would take this country. It, yeah, it's just she doesn't it, it's frightening. Jody, she doesn't understand why inflation occurs. You think inflation stops just because you tell people to charge more? Actually, that sets in a, a pattern of decreased growth, decreased employment. Then, if God, if you put it to the end, it's bread lines and everything else. America Absolutely. has always lived upon its growth. And a, a, a pro-tax policy, pro-business tax policy is what's enabled us to do this. If she kills Absolutely. us, she kills us around the world. Dr. Greg Murphy of North Carolina, always great to see you. Thanks for coming on Washington Watch.